All right, so kicking off the standards. Um, most of the readers will have no idea who you are. Mm. Quick introduction. Uh, well, I'm Tony Decker. I am, you know, assistant professor of political philosophy, and I teach at University College Maastricht, where I you know, hope to give the glorious gift that is philosophy to students. Mm -hmm. Fair. Um, I've been at quite a few, well, not quite a few. I've been at a couple of your lectures, mm -hmm. usually in the back, because that's what I do. Mm -hmm. um, how did you learn to present the way that you did? Uh, and what was the conscious thing? No, well, yeah, no, it was a conscious thing. It's a very conscious thing. I watch a lot of television. I watch a lot of people who talk. Uh, I had the privilege of going to some really good universities and to see some really very, uh, very glorious people lecture. Uh, and, and present, and there's things you pick up, and there's people you admire, and you think, oh, let me try this, and let me try that. So you're going to say, do you have a specific role model, or just in general some people with certain attributes? Uh, I think from every, 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 every hero that you have gives you something, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and, and there are certain things that, that you really admire in, in certain people. For some people, you admire their diction, uh, others you admire their physical presence. Some people you admire their ability to lay out various pieces and then pull them together to lay out you know, mental clues mm -hmm. and to sort of pull them together. There's all kinds of, of, of things that go into presenting and that you think to yourself, well, gee, he does that aspect really well and he does that aspect really well. And would you say that one of the aspects is more important than the other? Or a group of aspects and some minors, or is it really just no? I mean, look, orchestra. Uh, Ninety percent of, 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 of lecturing is tone, is is, is physical presence, mm -hmm. uh, of presenting, um, and and if you get that right, it uh, you know that's what people pick up on, mm -hmm. and then the content. Really, I mean, a lot of people think that lecturing or presenting, which is I'm sorry, lecturing is the main form of presenting that I do, is about content, and it's completely not about content. If anything, it's structure. The, the two things are really structure and style, actually. You know, have you read this, this guy called Nabokov? No. Famous American-Russian author who once said that you know, in, in, in literature there is only style and structure. And good ideas, that's nonsense. That's nonsense. <laughs> it's complete <laughs> bullshit. Uh, style and structure are the most important things. And everything else either follows from that or is used to achieve that. And I think it's even the latter. It's is used to achieve that. But, you know, and, and structure is really about being aware of, of where you are and where you're going, what you want to communicate uh, in a very concrete sense. Mm -hmm. And style is really about how you want to get that across. Mm -hmm. And everything else is subservient to that. Okay. That actually resonates with a lot I've learned over time, watching TED videos, etc. Uh, you're familiar with TED? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, in society as it is right now, when you look at politics, sports, mm -hmm. TED, mm -hmm. the significance of presenting, mm -hmm. when you see politicians droning on and some of them being very charismatic, mm -hmm. what place does presentation have in society? That's a very broad question, but mm -hmm. how do you perceive that? Um, well, I mean, look, you can't not present. Mm -hmm. This is uh, right. I just had a specific quote today about someone saying, "You cannot not communicate. You yeah. cannot not persuade, and yeah. you cannot not present." Well, you can certainly fail. I mean, you can certainly fail to to persuade. True. I mean, you can certainly fail to succeed at communicating. Right, in the sense that the information, oftentimes, <laughs> right, doesn't get conveyed right. in the way. Yeah, but. You certainly cannot not present. Mm -hmm. And so it is really important. I mean, if only because, you know, it's, it's very interesting when you look at the Western culture, and I think the Western you know, culture is really the most important thing that we have. It's, it's our most important asset. And in, and, and in the particular culture that I live in, which is the sort of Western post Enlightenment, post Romantic culture, we do not, and it's really the interesting tension between the Enlightenment and the Romantics, right? Mm -hmm. um, we, growing up in that culture, have 
we care an awful lot about authenticity. Mm -hmm. We care an awful lot about the person communicating the message. We care an awful lot, and I really think this is the romantic legacy, about, you know, about enthusiasm, and, and these are really the values that our culture prizes, and that, you know, have currency in our values, and they are very much connected with issues of presentation. Mm -hmm. And it's very interesting if you go, you know, to, to, you know, I don't want to generalize about Asian values, but, you know, uh, what the hell, uh, I can very much imagine that there are different cultures where these values are much less important. But I think certainly in our culture, um, they are regarded as very important, and that means that presentation is so very important. Mm -hmm. Would you say that it is... You say there are cultures in which they would matter less. Mm -hmm. uh, again, no stereotyping, but I, I do agree with... Um, well, they matter less because they don't have... You know, and look, it's, effectively, it's the romantic tradition, right? It's the fact that our Western culture gets, has first the Enlightenment, and then the Romantics. And our culture is a fusion about Enlightenment and Romanticism. Mm -hmm. And of course, presenting, when you think about it, is a fusion of those two, two worlds use whatever. Because when you're giving a presentation, on the one hand you're supposed to come with arguments and, and data and, 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 and all that kind of stuff, and you're trying to make an a, a intellectual structure. But at the same time, you're trying to communicate it on a personal level. I mean, when you think about it, why do we present? Why don't we just send slides? Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you, I mean, if, if you're a complete Enlightenment fanatic, right, in a sort of post-French Revolution Jacobite kind of way, if you're, you know, why would you bother presenting? Why not just write down? What's the value of presentation above uh, above the written word? Mm -hmm. um, and, and you know, I, I I can imagine that that in a in, in, purely from an Enlightenment setting, and certainly that's what you see just after the French Revolution, people ask, start asking these questions. Mm -hmm. um, it's the romantic parts of our history and of our culture that really emphasize the value of personal communication, the value of, of communicating not just information, but also feelings and perspectives and opinions. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, presenting really fits into that. Right, but I, I can completely understand that if you have a, you know, an enlightenment culture, that presentation makes no sense. Yeah. So I'm, I'm skipping a couple steps here, but in a culture where presentation is so important, if you look at the education of presentation mm -hmm. in primary schools, high schools, yeah. I mean, we're in a specific country, yeah. but in general, would you say that that suits our system or our conceptions? Um. Can you teach presentation? I think that's the issue, right? Can you learn? Um, I think that's the interesting thing, right? The truly great present presenters that I know have not been instructed to present like that. I, nobody ever told explicitly. me. Explicitly. No, no, fair enough. You, you learn by osmosis. And I think that, you know, once again, in the Romantic tradition, and in the context of presentation, which I think is in a sense a romantic form, yeah. what is valued above all else is, also, is authenticity. Mm -hmm. and, and so, in a certain sense, you cannot formally teach these kinds of things. Um, you can create conditions in which to encourage them, mm -hmm. but I don't think you can formally uh, teach them in that sense. Mm -hmm. Right? And, I mean... I can so imagine that there are people who could not imagine being good at presenting, like we just talked about, right? They, 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 and, and certainly, you can get everybody to a basic level and all, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but you cannot uh, instruct people. And so all you can do is, you know, uh, A, confront them with good and bad examples, mm -hmm. and B, give them the opportunity to try stuff. And I think, you know, does our society, our educational system do that? So we do get a lot of do presentation, etc. And you do get some instruction about... Yeah, but we're so bad at giving feedback. 
Yes, we are. We're so dreadfully bad at giving feedback. Uh, right? That's one thing. And we don't really look at really good presentations in a systematic way either, right? We don't have that, that variety. Now, in, in part, I think that that is... Well, I mean, it, first of all, this feedback issue is, is really important. Mm -hmm. I think that's actually the main culprit. In, you know, so so why, do you, why do you think that is? Oh, because, you know, the hardest thing in life is to be honest without hurting people. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. I mean, Fellini says in, in the great movie Otto e Mezzo. Have you seen that? Oh, that's awesome. Uh, you know, happiness is the ability to tell people the truth without being afraid of hurting them. Without being afraid or without hurting them? Without, well, without hurting them and without, well, not even the fear of hurting people mm -hmm. is already what, I mean, in a sense, it's the fear of hurting them that is the concerning factor, mm -hmm. right? Because you're afraid that you might hurt them, you don't say that. Yeah. Uh, and the reason why, it's all linked, actually, I'm now seeing, why, it's, why there is this very great fear of hurting people is because, in the Romantic tradition again, presenting is very much concerned with authentic experience and authenticity as a person, right? It's very difficult, it's very easy for me to say, to make a difference between what you wrote and what you are. Mm -hmm. I like you, but your writing is shit. Mm -hmm. That is a, a distinction that I think is very easy to make. Uh -huh. I like you, I think you're a nice guy, but your presentation sucks. Mm -hmm. Is a much harder thing to disentangle. Right? Because, because it's about that authenticity. Exactly. And so I, it, it's very hard to criticize uh, somebody's presentation, especially on presentation grounds, on style and structure grounds, mm -hmm. without criticizing them. Yeah. And that's just really hard. And I think that's yeah, I mean, and the problem is that because of that, the people that we see around us presenting uh, are just really bad at it as well, right? And you have to make an active effort to find really good presentations. Yeah. So, in a quick sum, the only way you say to really learn presenting is to look at what you find is really good, mm -hmm. what you think is really bad, mm -hmm. and find a personal style. Well, and, 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 and make explicit, what do you think, why do you think this is good? Mm -hmm. Right, and, and, and try to make that... So do analyze that. Analyze. Yeah, 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 and, and be reflective about it. And of course, learning how to be reflective is hard. Uh, and, and to really figure out how does this work? Why, I, I'm, 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 you know, I have this effect when I see Steve Jobs, how does he do it? Mm -hmm. I have this experience when I watch Michael Sandel and Jerry Cohn, how do I do it? How does, what's going on here? How does this work? Mm -hmm. right, what's the trick here? Yeah. What's the trick that's being played? Yeah. So Steve Jobs is basically doing is he's one hour of commercials and people watch it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but how does that work? And why does that have the effect uh, that it has? And why does Bill Gates giving the same hour of commercials not work? <laughs> yeah. Well, I once saw a deception of Steve Jobs' types presentations with all sorts of analyses and stuff. Do you think that you can analyze a presentation like that? Um. Yes. Certainly, well, certainly you can. And, but is, is it useful? Will it teach you anything? Or is that, again, that learning by osmosis? Mm, well, I think you can be... Well, it's the beginning of the conversation. It's not the end, right? It's, it's a hermeneutic, not an algorithm. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, in the sense that you can look at issues of how does he pause and how does he phrase and how does he build things up. Right? And why does that work in that particular context? Mm -hmm. That, I think, is very important, very helpful. But, the, but I would be very wor wary to sort of deduce from that a general regularity. Yeah. So it's the beginning of the conversation, but it's, but not, it's not the end. end. Yeah. Okay. Um, you talk a bit about some of the names you like. What is your favorite... If, do you have a favorite presentation? Or a favorite... Pre well, a favorite presentation... I did once see the great Jerry Cohen completely level 500 undergraduates with a lecture called Why Not Socialism. Mm -hmm. Completely just blow their brains out. 
Mm-hmm. And that is, I mean, it's now published as a book, actually. It's a fantastic book as well. But that was a, you know, that was a pretty awesome experience. And, and what elements was that? Did the, 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 what elements made that presentation so... No, a, a deep understanding of his audience. Mm-hmm. A deep understanding of, of the realization. This is a lecture about trying to get people... And we had a very clear idea about what he wanted to achieve with that lecture. It's called Why Not Socialism? And he wanted mm-hmm. people to to imagine that, you know, there are alternatives to contemporary Western capitalism Mm -hmm. and that the values instantiated in socialism are actually values to people, even those who come out of a capitalist system. So he had a very clear goal about his presentation. And of course, a lot of people, this is the the mistake that people often make, you know, what do you want this presentation to do? Mm -hmm. Right? Well, here the, the goal was very clear. I want you guys who are, and this was, you know, very, these were very good undergraduates, these were undergraduate PPEists, uh, mm-hmm. L, which is the program of Oxford, which is the sort of the famous social sciences program. Mm-hmm. And these people are, by and large, the winners of capitalist society. Let's be honest, right? Yeah, yeah. These are the winners of the system. And to get these people to, uh, to let go of that system, to entertain for the moment if only for a brief moment, the possibilities of different forms of social ordering. Uh, that was his goal there, and he was very clear about how he wanted to achieve that goal. And, and that allowed him, first of all, to communicate with his audience, right? Uh, I think that's one of the great things about, well, certainly that lecture, but many things, is, is that you're actually communicating with your audience by understanding what their assumptions are and what their values are and to really connect with them on those values. Mm-hmm. So that says there will never be a one-size-fits-all type of presentation. No, 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 God, no. Know thine audience. Mm-hmm. Know thine audience. Uh, and, 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 you know, actively engage their values and their questions and where they are and, 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 and use that to draw them in. Really, you know, it's a, on two occasions in my lecturing, in my presentation career, I have gotten applause on the first line. <laughs> that is skillful. Wouldn't you say? I was completely shocked over. I mean, and one of them was I was giving a, uh, a lecture on ethics to a bunch of people at the Graduate School of Governance. Mm-hmm. And I knew this was January and they were, they were doing a heavy econometrics course. Uh-huh. Right, and I knew that they were completely depressed by it, and so I just walked in and said, "Good, afternoon. good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tim Decker, and I am not an economist." <laughs> Had them complete. At that point, you've got them, right? Uh, at that point, y- you've got them, and, and the, the reason why you've got them is because <coughs> you can really say we understand each other, and we I understand where you're coming from and what your mental state is, and and I can work with that. Well, at that point, you know. You draw them in. I mean, one of the great things about presenting is that the audience is becoming an endangered species. Mm -hmm. There are very few audiences in the traditional sense left. In the sense that uh, an audience as, as... I mean, if you go to a a recording television program, there's an audience there, but it's not really an audience. Half of them are being paid. No, but they got in, they got in free. I even know some ones where they get paid. Okay, great. Right? Uh, and their job is to make everybody else look good. Right? I mean, to a certain extent, when you're presenting academically, there's this issue as well. Uh, right? The people are there because, and, you, and they know that you grade and you write the exam and so on, yada, yada, yada. I mean, an audience is a very rare thing. I mean, an audience has a beast that must be conquered and slain and wrestle down to the map and needs to be charmed uh, and needs to be engaged it is a deeply terrible thing but also deeply wonderful uh, and I think that, you know one of the ways in which you can do that is by communicating hey I get you I understand who you are and where you're coming from and what your your preoccupations are and to really uh, and to thereby adapt the trick that you're playing because you know it, to a certain extent, it is a trick that you're playing. Uh, it is a a, well, a technique. Uh, well, 
technica. The technica isn't right, but there's a little game that's being played. There's a gimmick or a, a, a thing, right? Yeah. Um, that 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 you can use to to do it. Uh, you know, if you watch, oh gosh, I mean, there are some people. For example, one trick that that people play is is you know the boy next door, but who is also very smart. You know, if you look at the video that I do, Matthijs van Nieuwkerk has this plays this game. Why is he charming? He's charming because he's actually really smart, but because he's so the boy next door, uh -huh. he can get away without with being smart without anybody hating him for it. Yeah, uh, that's the trick there, right? I mean, it's 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 uh, it's just a matter of finding the trick. I mean, if you, if you listen to Frank Sinatra, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's it's fantastic. Sing along with Frank Sinatra. And what you will find is that Frank Sinatra is always half a second later than you would be when you sing along with him, with a recording of him. When he takes a pause, he's always half a second later than, you're, than you would be when you sang the same song. Yeah. And what that does is it, it keeps you waiting. And it gets the sort of, ah, right? By yeah. just making it a little longer, you get the audience to go... Yeah, and these are all ways in which you can play with, with your audience, but it requires you to have an understanding of the audience. Yeah. So, so let's say we've got someone who's terrible at presenting. Where do you start? Um, with their feet. With their feet? Yes. In what way? I think I, I know where you're playing. No, I mean, it, 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 it's... Um, there's a great, especially in presenting, there's a great uh, connection between the physical and the, the mental or the spiritual, you may want to call it. In the sense uh, that if you, uh, that, you know, if, you, if you, people badly present, they, they tend to, I've never seen anybody who had bad posture present really well. Mm -hmm. um, well, there were people who had bad posture, but they weren't having bad posture at the time. It's about, you know, how do you... It's a physical thing presenting. Don't pretend that it's anything else. And so if you just get the feet right, right, then you can open up somebody. And of course, you know, this is... I think the best thing. I mean, good shoes. I mean, good shoes help for presenting. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you just want to stand straight and stand right. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and people who present, they immediately... They start to do this, right? They sort of... Well, they start doing this and yeah. they start to... Huh? And they and, and and they start standing like 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 this, right? They immediately one foot immediately yeah. goes backwards, right? And what you're doing is you're you're standing this way, so this way a little fewer bullets will hit you. Yeah, right. right. It's sort it's of sideways. You, you stand sideways, and why do you stand up? Because you're less exposed. It's a bit like kung fu. <laughs> no, but but well, I don't know yeah. kung fu, but it, 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 you know, but and it's completely stupid because nobody's shooting at you, right? So it's a completely. Stupid. I mean, this is a rational thing when they're shooting arrows at you. But is it then a bit that authenticity thing that you feel? Threatened, and that makes you stand like that, and that makes people find you less less a good presenter. Well, which one comes first, right? That's the internal. That's the interesting uh, question, right? Uh, how does it go? How does it? Uh, how does it go? But the thing is, it's easy to change that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's one of the things that you can very easily change. Um, so there's that, and, and there's also the issue. Um, that people shouldn't memorize. Mm -hmm. This is the other. I mean, uh, feet are important, but the other issue is, is you know, the issue of memorization. And I've, I've done this, I hate it, right? I've, I've, I've experimented with this quite a bit myself. How much preparation do you do? And what sort of preparation mm -hmm. do you do? And I think a, a lot of people memorize too much. Mm -hmm. In the sense that what I find interesting to look at, I don't know if people find this, is, is a brain at work. Mm -hmm. And authenticity has a lot to do with a brain at work. Yeah. Right? People need to see that you are thinking with them. Uh, that there's stuff going on. A bit. I mean, presenting is like cooking, right? You can't do it too early ahead. You have to get your ingredients done, but it has to happen in the moment. Yeah. And a lot of, 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 of people either prepare too much or too little. Mm -hmm. um, and that's another thing that I think you need to, to work on, right? To say, have a structure and, and stick to the structure, but don't 
work on the formulations. Mm -hmm. Because what tends to happen, at least in my experience in those cases, is that people start remembering the formulations and start to try to remember the formulations and start thinking to themselves, am I saying what I prepared? Ah, and then you make a mistake. And, people... uh, and then you start worrying about that. And so the trick is to have enough of a structure in your head that you know where you're going, but to not actually verbalize it until the moment. Mm -hmm. To let it, you know, uh, to let it happen. Yeah, and that's that authenticity. Yeah, exactly. And and, and and sometimes authenticity is damned hard work, right? I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, some people think that, you know, um, you can just show up. No, it doesn't. I mean, this is the great irony of, of, of authenticity, right? It, it sometimes takes an awful lot of rehearsals to be authentic. Yeah, and it and and uh, which is again one of the interesting facets of our Western culture, mm -hmm. in the sense that you know, there's notion of we like people to be cool, and it, and, and and coolness is a very interesting concept I find because coolness implies a sort of you know effortlessness, mm -hmm. it, it, and, and or at least perceived. Yeah, 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 exactly, right. And the wonderful thing is, if you there's a, this great book uh, by a guy called Bas Baltazar Castiglione who was a courtier at the court of, of Francesco de' Medici in Renaissance Florence, who wrote a book, The Book of Courtier, which is all about, you know, good advice if you want to survive at the court of your oh. average tyrant, Francesco de' Medici. And, and, it's, and, and he introduces this concept of sprezzatura, effortlessness. And the great, the secret to, to doing well at court is to display a certain degree of effortlessness. Mm -hmm. Right and and this sort of studied effortlessness still I think is today what we value in our presenters. Mm -hmm. Right, this feeling of 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 I'm as if I'm making it up. I'm not making it up. I prepared my ass off, <laughs> but, but it looks here. like that. Yeah, and when you say that, and you look at, for example, the the well. Ideal, for example, if you look at a country like the U.S., mm. where hard work is the what people find, well, a certain group of people find the majority finds mm. desirable. I'm a hard working. Does that clash with the whole? But when you want to see someone presenting, you want it to be effortless. And um, how about life? Life is an art form. Yeah, well, look at Romney and look at Kennedy, right? There you go. Uh, no, but, but seriously, that those are sort of the two extremes. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Americans say they value hard work, but they also value talent. Mm -hmm. And in many ways, they value talent more than just sheer hard work, mm -hmm. right? Americans have a, 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 a... They value a particular kind of hard work. They value flair. They value entrepreneurship. They value uh, that kind of thing. I mean, it's interesting, right? Yes, Americans value hard work enormously. At least that's what they say. But they never award effort prizes. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's interesting, right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah it's yeah. a very Dutch thing to also award prizes for <laughs> effort. The yeah, the, right, the, 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 or the, the good sportsman, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, interesting, right? The, yes, they say it's all about hard work and blah, 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 and if you can... Uh, if but you only work, if you win. Exactly. Exactly, right? And of course, they say they value hard work and, and social mobility, but actually, they have the lowest social mobility of any advanced country in the world. <laughs> Fair. I mean, if you, if, seriously, if you want to live the American dream, go to Denmark. <laughs> No, Denmark has much higher social mobility than, yeah. than the United States, if you just look at it statistically. Yeah. And so, you know, this is the you know, fascinating thing about if you look at all these debates, right, um, you know, in, in, in the election, the moments that we remember uh, in debates are not the, the demonstrations of hard work but the demonstrations of, of effortless superiority, right? Did you ever yes. see this debate with um, Reagan versus, I think it was Mondale, but it was one of them, Reagan in 84, right? Uh, at which point, you know, Reagan was sort of 82. Mm -hmm. It's very famous, and you should look it up, it's quite awesome. And, and 
uh, and, and somebody asked him during one of these debates, Mr. Reagan, don't you think you're a bit old to be president? He said, no, 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 I, I, I will not let my opponent's youthful inexperience become an issue in this campaign. <laughs> <laughs> right? Brilliant! Uh, I mean, and, and studied like hell, right? But again, yeah. it just came out right. Yeah. Like a boss, we would say these days. No, but, 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 uh, uh, right? It, it, it is that notion of, of virtuosity, of, mm -hmm. of effortlessness, of study effortlessness, that makes a good presentation. Studied effortlessness. Yes. Yes, exactly. And, and, and the trick is how do you make it work and how do you make it authentic? Mm -hmm. And you know, there's a couple of tricks that you can play there, but you know, that's, that's the thing. So, is there, um, in your opinion, one golden piece of advice? Like, if you do everything wrong, at least get that right and you should be fine. Oh, uh, throw half of it away. Throw half of it away? Yeah. Of the presentation? Yeah. Do less. Reduce, reduce, reduce. Mm -hmm. Reduce yeah. complexity, reduce complexity, reduce complexity. Mm -hmm. Both in your speech or you're talking here about German slides, so to say. Also, in everything, really. In what you're saying, in how you're saying it, in how you're using your slides, throw half of it away. That's Einstein style. Everything should be as simple as possible, but not simpler than that. Well, okay. Great. Everything should be reduced. Yeah, Einstein's good advice. Uh, yeah, I'll take that. T take that. <laughs> I'll take that. Okay. Um, because, you know, oftentimes, complexity, and this is not easy to throw half of it away, by the way. Mm -hmm. and the reason why it's not easy to throw half of it away is because complexity is also a defense mechanism. Mm -hmm. Complexity is an intellectual way of doing this. Yeah. Complexity is a way of creating wiggle room for yourself. Uh, in the sense that if you say something complicated and people raise an objection, you can say, no, no, you didn't understand, right? Yeah. Complexity is a form of, of padding. Uh, Safety net. Yeah, it is, right? If you make things completely explicit, again, you're exposed. Uh, and, you know, complexity, especially needless complexity, most complexity is needless, is really way of, 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 you know, minimizing your actual exposure. Mm -hmm. And so making things simple is, is really hard. Uh, because it doesn't, it, 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 you know, you're, you're just laying your cards on the table. This is what I have. This is what I've got. Uh, and, and, you know, take it or leave it. But this is what I'm, I'm doing. And, and, and then... And the one thing is, I mean, it's scary, but at the same time, it, it's also very liberating. Mm -hmm. Because if you make things really explicit, people might disagree. But at least you know what you're disagreeing with, and, and, and then, you know, um, there's very little you can do about it. Yeah. There's very little that you can, you know, if, if, if things are completely explicit, uh, then people either will like it or they won't. Mm -hmm. But yeah, It's a bit like in social situations, insinuating as opposed to stating what you think or what you... Yeah, but if you're insinuating, right, there's ambiguity, and ambiguity uh, is a type of, of disagreement and a type of criticism that immediately <coughs> invites more ambiguity mm -hmm. and, 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 dis and decontestation. Did you mean this or did you mean this? Or... Right? Mm -hmm. uh, coolest thing I've ever seen in a presentation that was absolutely terrible. This was a lady who was presenting quite badly. Mm -hmm. uh, a very famous professor of political science. Uh, and a philosopher, also very famous professor, exceptionally cruel, said, so, wait, I, well, look, I, there's two ways of understanding what you say. If you mean this, then you're fucked here, and if you mean that, then you're fucked there. So either way, you're fucked. <laughs> this poor lady. Completely. That must be terrible when you're standing on that stage. Well, no, he was right. Um, well, like, I would hope so. No, but, right? Um... 
Whereas when you're just clear in what you're doing and keeping it simple, they, they won't be able to say that. They will say, yeah, I happen to think differently. But you can have a constructive discussion about that. So, yeah, throw half out. Throw half out. Uh, throw half out and, and, and just, you know, you get a very different discussion at that point. Uh, and, and, you know, too often times, too often discussions afterwards go about, you know, what exactly did you say and what exactly didn't you say, no, 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 no. Mm-hmm. Um, which I don't think very is very helpful. Yeah, you want to go constructively on. Yeah, and and keeping it simple. You know, the great thing about look, there's two things about presentation. One thing good, one thing bad. One of the good things is that you can play your own game, mm-hmm. right? You can set the rules. Yeah, you have a lot of freedom in in setting the rules. The problem is, if you fail according to your own rules, mm-hmm. it's a big fail. Then right? Yeah. I mean, failing according to somebody else's rules, well, they were somebody else's rules. What do you expect? Uh, failing according to your own rules, big problem. And so, keeping it simple and keeping your own rules simple, uh, and your own, and by rules I mean sort of internal logic and line, if you keep it simple, it's much more likely that you'll be able to succeed. And, and you know, what ultimately sells a presentation or a product or communicates a vision is really what you're trying to do rather than how you do it. Mm-hmm. And so by ensuring that what you're trying to do is clear, um, that's what you communicate on. And then it's much more, it's much simpler to do your own thing and do it well than to feel forced into some sort of complexity, yeah. which you'll never be able to do. So play by your own rules. Keep it simple so that you can play by your own rules. rules. Yeah. Sounds good. Because that's where complexity comes from. Sorry. <laughs> Love it though. Complexity comes out of a desire to play by somebody else's rules. Mm. This is how things get complicated. By people constantly trying to play by each other's rules? Yes. And, and, and you know, I want to say this, but I have to make it fit this structure. Yeah, it doesn't. As a side note, do you see this in student papers? Yes, constantly. Constantly. Uh, and... and, and this constant uh, desire to, you know, people, and you see this especially in motivational statements and, and all that kind of stuff, right? People want the words to do the, the talking, the, the big sentences. Uh, but people don't, you don't communicate with words, you communicate with ideas. Mm-hmm. And so students, you know, and often they either, they either you know, what are they, they expect the footnotes to do the work, or the, the complex sentences, or the, look how many ideas here. No, throw half of it away. Throw half of it away. Take a few ideas and really work with them. And show me how you can develop an idea, rather than showing the amount of ideas that you have. Yeah. Throw half of it away. Throw half of it away. Throw half of it away. And, and, and really, you know, and, and show a mind at work. Same thing goes, as I said, right? Don't memorize, but, but show the mind at work. Yeah. Show ideas developing into one another. Don't show me fancy words. I know more fancy words than you do anyway. <laughs> Don't try to impress me with that. Mm-hmm. It doesn't impress me at all. Yeah. Ideas and, and, and people really working with ideas, that impresses. Mm-hmm. That works. Okay. Any concluding remarks? Anything that's on the... Well, no, I think I've said enough. <laughs> I've said enough. I've said enough. No. Okay, good. Well, then, thank you very much for your cooperation. My pleasure. My pleasure. It's going to be fun. So who else? Who's next?